Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Habrakah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. These blessings and salutations to the hopefully elect. Right, the brother Azariah here with the Pittsburgh GMS camp, and I just want to touch on these two articles I came across. Um, so this first article says, um, Pope Francis says, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, which his name is Yahweh Shai, is not our hope. Mary and the Mother Church are, you know. And, uh, you know, it just, you know, let's see. Okay. The Roman Catholic Church is a false prophet spoken about in the book of Revelation. I'm going to find it here. Revelation. Hang right, on one second. Pull this up here. Let's see, well, what did you say that one? Fuck. Right. Revelation 19 and 19. Okay. Revelation 19 and uh, 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And this is when NATO and the EU and all the different kings of the earth go to war against Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, okay? When he comes back to defend the children of Israel from, from uh, their persecution and also um, to destroy the kings of this earth and, you know, to gather the elect of the Most High. All right, in verse 20, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that worked miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake, a fire burning with brimstone, which represents the nuclear missiles that are going to be shot on America, Babylon, the Great, in particular, you know, and also over there in the Middle East region that is the Israel region, you know, where the armies will gather, okay, the Valley of uh, Decision, uh, Yahweh Shapat, the Valley of Jehoshaphat, you know. All right. And so, um, you know, here, here goes the here goes the false prophet, and you know, uh, uttering madness again. You know, with this woman worship, this Mother Mary worship, which you know, as you can see, it's an Edomite, you know, picture. You know, and uh, you know, who knows whatever you know reason they have carnally why they decided to do this. I mean, they do worship. Let me see. Let me find. do bow down to this black Madonna you know so uh you know. and it just really kind of shows you uh, you know the original color of who, who they call Mother Mary you know she was a so called black woman from the tribe of Judah okay but anyway I really don't want to go too deep in this, you know. You know, because you eat them ice, man. You you really don't have any any reason picking up the book, you know, and reading anything and trying to be a teacher. Okay, but unto the wicked, Psalms 15 and 16, but unto the wicked, the Most High saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Okay? Seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee, when thou sawest a thief, thou consentest with him and hast been partakers with, partaker with adulterers. You know? And yeah, man, what unto the wicked the most I say, if what hast thou to do to, to declare my statutes? What could you possibly do to deem you worthy of declaring his statutes? You don't, you don't believe. You don't, you know, you don't you see in that that cast it. Seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee. You hate instruction and you cast your word, cast the most high's words behind thee. As you can see in this picture, he's bowing to the, you know, 
he's looking at this statue of this Edomite, you know, Mary and supposedly, let's just say, baby Jesus, because that's not a depiction of Yahweh Shai. It's completely inaccurate. So he's looking at this white so-called Mary and this white, you know, baby, quote unquote, Jesus, you know, with some type of reverence, you know, and, and the scriptures tell you not to make unto thee any graven image, you know. Exodus 20 and 3 thou shalt have no other gods before me thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven or above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth thou shalt not bow thyself unto them nor serve them for I Yahweh thy power am a jealous power visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me okay so it's just showing you you know they they make these graven images and they they worship they bow down unto these graven images you know you know they have their little prayer beads and they oh, the father the son and the holy spirit the mother mary of god and they go into all this weird stuff you know and it's just like you know this is the false prophet man they're completely false man. any of you jakes caught up in the catholicism you're completely off okay completely off and I want to get into this other little article I saw too, just briefly. It says Pope Francis has officially changed the Lord's Prayer because quote unquote Jesus was wrong. You know. And so um one second. Damn demons be hopping on this damn cat and you wanna meow while I'm making a video. <sighs> anyway. Pope Francis has officially changed the Lord's Prayer because he says Jesus was wrong. And you scriptures, man, you don't know the scriptures, man, you know. Okay, what was it? Caused us to. <sighs> I don't think that, this is not what it says. Hey man, damn cat came here and threw me off. Um, because there's a scripture, man. So basically, I'm going to just read some of this. Lord willing, it comes back to me. Okay. It says, Pope Francis has officially changed the Lord's Prayer because who he calls Jesus. He says Jesus was wrong. Pope Francis has officially approved the change to the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6 and 13 that replaces, lead us not into temptation with, do not let us fall into temptation. A U.S. Catholic reported Monday that the Vatican enacted the change on May 22nd. Uh, I don't see how we can link pope believes a new version is better it's like you uh, a new version is better because the first translation implies that the most high leads people into temptation an action that is against his nature as a good and holy power and you know now the scriptures do talk about him leading not you know leading he does not tempt a man but a man is drawn away by his own lust you know James 1 and 13. But there's a bigger picture to it. James 1 and 13, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of the Most High, for the Most High can not be tempted with evil. Evil neither tempteth he any man. But he does have left hand angels out there that tempt men, you know. And uh, I can't think of the scripture, man. There's a scripture basically where it says, you know, that he caused us to, um, you know, to, he caused us to go against his his statutes. Can't remember where it is. Like yeah.
Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I don't think this is it. Yeah, called me to stumble at the law. Yeah, corrupted the covenant of Levi. Say if yeah, how well. Hmm. Well, Salakia, I'm gonna have to find that one. But basically, it just tell us that the Most High, um, you know, and we know that the Most High is in control of all things, man. You know, let's just prove that. Because if a man, matter of fact, let's see here. Um. Proverbs 5 and 22 His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself and he shall be holden with the cords of his sins Okay So Okay um, Also verse 21 says For the ways of men are before the eyes of Yahweh and he pondereth all his goings The Most High thinks about you know the goings of, of, the, of, of men and he controls what you're going to do you know he controls what you're going to do he knows what type of soul, type of spirit you are. <clears throat> you know, ultimately, it's all been decided, you know, beyond your understanding why there are wicked and why there are righteous. You know, even of the Israelites, there will be some who two thirds of, uh, of the nation of Israel who have been slated for destruction. You know, and if the elect were chosen from the beginning of time, these same men that will be slated for destruction have also been chosen from the beginning of time. So you can't. You know, try to put into your mindset of why the Most High did what he did or does what he does. You know, but there are some that have been chosen for death. So when it says lead us not into temptation, he's basically saying, look, you know, it's basically going into what? What did, um, what did, um, 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 Psalms 51 and 11. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. You see, you got to remember when, when, when King Saul was chosen to be king over Israel, he was already set up to be a wicked king because Israel wanted them. Israel wanted a king, you know. I know that's not the wording of it, but here we go. First Samuel 8. Just... First Samuel 8. Okay. Let's get the point here. Uh, okay, First Samuel 8 and 11. And he said, this will be the manner because Israel was begging for a king. Even though they had uh, Samuel as a judge, they wanted a king. And so the Most High was like, well, since y'all rejecting, y'all rejecting me in the way that I wanted to govern you, I'm going to give you a wicked king over you. And let's just read it. And he said, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen. And some shall run before his chariots. And he will appoint them captains over thousands and captains over fifty. So like you. Um, uh, captains over hundreds or thousands and captains over fifties. And will set them to ear his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war. And instruments of his chariots, and he would take your daughters to be confectionaries, and to be cooks, and to be bakers. He would take your fields, and your vineyards, and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. Okay, he would take the tenth of your seed and of your vineyards, and of and give to his officers and his and to his servants. He would take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses, and put them to his work. He would take the tenth of your sheep, and ye shall be his servants, and ye shall cry out in that day because of your king, which he shall have chosen you, and Yahweh will not hear you in that day, nevertheless. <clears throat> Salaki, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, 
And they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of his people, and he rehearsed them in the ears of Yahweh. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto this city. So as you can see, the Most High told them, Look, I'm going to choose you a king that's going to be over you, but he's going to use you. He's going to mistreat you, you know. He's going to mistreat you. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. He's going to do this. I'm going to choose him to do this to you, man. You know, so that just kind of goes to show you just an example of how the Most High, you know, uh, uh, um, chose somebody to, you know, be over the, the children of Israel that was going to uh, treat them evilly. You know, he put it on Saul to do this. You know, and I'll just get this last scripture here. All right. Proverbs 21, and if the, this ain't just for the king, this is for all, all men. Proverbs 21 and 1, the king's heart is in the hand of Yahweh, as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. So he can turn the king's heart where he wants it to go, just like it just showed you uh, with Saul, man. He turned Saul's heart, he caused Saul to be that way towards the children of Israel, you know, for the wickedness of Israel. And there's two-thirds of the nation of Israel, who he's put it on their heart to be wickedly, you know. Let's let's get that. Make their ears of yeah, heavy. Yeah, yeah. Isaiah six and ten. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed, okay? So, all right, matter of fact, started verse 8, I also I heard the voice of Yahweh saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go forth for us? Then said, I, here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? He, and he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the houses without man and the land be utterly desolate. And Yahweh have removed men far away and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tent and it shall return. And shall be eaten as a teal tree, as an oak, whose substance is in them when they have, when they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. And it's just going into how the remnant is going to basically feed the earth. You know, the remnant is going to replenish the earth. The, the, the remnant is going to be, you know, the, that cluster, that first, those first fruits. You know, you know, under Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. It's going to be like the saving grace. You know, the remnant is going to be like the saving grace of the rest of the world. You know, starting with Yahweh, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, you know, Yahweh Shai, the, the 12, you know, and the elect, you know, they're going to be like the healing, you know, so to speak, of the earth. That's why I said the Holy, the Holy Seed shall be the substance thereof, you know, Israelites in general, but, you know, starting with Yahweh Shai and the elect, going to be, you know, the government, man, the governing body in there. And we're going to heal the world with righteousness. You know, Lord, will not be of that number. We're going to heal the, the world with, with the Most High's laws, okay, in his ways. All right, so hopefully this, you know, has made sense and has been, uh, um, you know, um, edifying. I want to give all honor, glory, and praises. But, uh, you know, actually, let me just speak on this one more time. The Most High have not chosen all these people, man. That's why it says, make the heart of these people fat and their ears heavy. You know, so you have to understand most I have chosen some some people to be to walk to to be led into temptation. He have put it on their spirit to lead them into temptation. And so you wicked, you know, popes and Edomites just taking the scriptures in your mouth and changing up, you know, the way and not understanding the way that the most high did things. So you want to change and add to and take away from the doctrine. 
you don't understand the scriptures, you don't understand the nature of the Most High. You know, that's, that reminds me of this song that the Red Hot Chili Peppers came out with. You know, it's called Dark Necessities, right? All right. Right. It says, um, I'm going to go to the, uh, the, the, the hook. You don't know my mind. You don't know my kind. Dark necessities are part of my design. Tell the world that I am falling from the sky. Dark necessities are part of my design. You know, so and it's a kind of catchy song, too. But it just kind of shows you, you don't know the mind of the Most High. You don't know his kind because dark necessities are a part of his desi design. There has to be a two third in order for there to be an elect. There has to be an Esau in order for, there to, for, for Jacob, uh, you know, for the story for Jacob to, to, to overcome him. You know, just like Pharaoh had to be there and the Most High hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he may show his power. He hardened Pharaoh's heart to be that antagonist. Dark necessities are a part of his design. So when you go into this whole, you know, oh, he doesn't want nobody to fall into temptation. Two thirds of Israel are going to fall into temptation and be overcome with their sins and be destroyed. You know, the nation is the nation of Esau is, um, you know, the Edomites. They have been created to be the weak, created to be the wicked, just like Pharaoh was back in those times. <clears throat> so, you know, all under glory and praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Harakakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopefully elect. Okay, may, may the blessing of election fall upon your houses. Be sincere, Akim, out there. Shalom.